Okay, so two and a half gig Ethernet walks into a bar. Wait, I just realized this might not actually be a very funny or really a joke at all, frankly, but hear me out. Two and a half gig Ethernet walks into a bar. And she's nervously eyeing all the multi-gigabit standards sitting in there. The big players are all showing off. There's 40 gig in the corner chatting up the locals, batting its eye diagrams. And the 100 gig just won big with a bluff in the Surtees poker game. She wonders if she might just be out of place with her quaint but dated little data rates. Suddenly, though, the crowd notices her. And everyone moves aside to welcome her. The red carpet rolls out and smack dab in the middle of the room is a huge table with a sign that says reserved for two and a half gig Ethernet. (laughs) Yep, it's that kind of town. There's still plenty of props for the one who actually still does most of the work. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. While the newest, fastest standards seem to get all the press, most of the work in the world today is still done with stable, reliable, slightly slower standards. My guest today is Javaria Hussein from Altera, and we're here to talk about Altera's IP for that sweet spot in the Ethernet world. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Altera's IP for 2.5 gig Ethernet. Hi, Javeria. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad to be here. So everybody is usually talking about all the newest and fastest standards, 100 gig and beyond, right? But today we're talking about 2.5 gig Ethernet. Why are we going backward? What do we need to know here? So it's really about us talking about a different use. So the 400 gig space, 100 gig space is all about communications companies. Two and a half gig ethernet is really about people. It's really about people using their mobile phones to do everything, about using their tablets to do everything. And you see that with this graph, which basically shows the amount of IP traffic being used by any device. And you'll see that the green, the purple, the blue, those are all mobile uses of traffic. And it's just, it's growing. It's growing quickly, it's growing rapidly, it's growing exponentially. That's why two and a half gig ethernet is important for us to be talking about. All right, so let's dive down into this mobile growth a little bit. What are the implications of all this mobile expansion on our existing infrastructure? So that's a really good point. On the wireless side, we're actually doing okay. There's new emerging standards of four gig, five gig wireless standards. But on the wired side, we're hitting a bottleneck. Oh, okay. What's happening is with the amount of traffic we have that's coming from mobile and Wi-Fi, we're exceeding the amount of wired traffic being used today. So when you now flip the equation, we're getting into a bit of a problem. 61% of traffic is gonna be mobile. Wow. And that means we need to convert it from that wireless network to a wired network. And that's where we're talking about two and a half gig ethernet. The problem we have is the cat five, cat six cabling that's been laid everywhere is really rated to one gig. Yeah. And we're maxed out. So now we have an issue where we need to figure out what we need to do. We're seriously investigating what our options are. And that's why two and a half gig Ethernet is even part of the conversation, because it could be a next logical step for all of our one gig infrastructure. Oh, great. So I'm going to have to rip out all that Cat5. (laughs) But seriously, where do you see the standards going next? What's the trend in data rates? Well, the standards next are really going and fragmenting a little bit more. So we usually typically went from one gig to 10 gig, from 10 gig to 100 gig. Right. Now what we're doing is we're going in between that one gig and 10 gig space to try to define a two and a half gig Ethernet or a five gig Ethernet, something that gets us a little bit more bandwidth and hopefully not a whole revamp of our infrastructure. I see. So we're still going faster, but in smaller steps. Exactly. What are some of the standards we're going to have to be dealing with in the future? So right now, this is all fairly new. So there's two standards that are actually coming out, which makes this a really interesting dynamic space to be in. Yeah. There's the MG-based T standard and the N-based T standard. And these are actually alliances. So right now, as we speak, there is no two and a half gig standard. 
There isn't a five gig standard. This is all kind of the Wild West right now. Okay. But you'll see there's some very big players that are helping drive what these standards are going to look like and do that very, very quickly. So we expect to see that between the MG Base T and the N Base T alliances, we'll be able to come to a standard hopefully within another year. So this Wild West you mentioned is usually the sweet spot for FPGAs, right? It seems like FPGAs really shine when standards are up in the air. Yes, that's where we do best. We get that flexibility in there to be able to support both of the standards, whatever it might be down the road. But it gives you the ability to design something now so that you're ahead of the curve when you need to deliver your equipment. Okay, these standards rippling through seems like they would be expensive in terms of infrastructure changes, wouldn't they? You would think. And this is where we love what's going on right now because with an FPGA, we have the ability to help essentially diminish a lot of that cost. Cool, okay. You'll get your two and a half X the bandwidth when you move from one gig to two and a half gig ethernet. Yeah. That part of it is pretty straightforward. When you add into that the fact that we can do this with FPGAs without touching any of your Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6 cabling that you've laid out within your company, within your apartment complex, within your stadiums, your arenas, that becomes interesting. That's where we get excited. So you really can get 2.5x the performance at pretty much none of the cost. Sweet, so I don't have to rip out that Cat5 after all. So your business card says Altera. What solutions does Altera offer in this space? So Altera has offered Ethernet IP cores for years. What's new with this is that we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel. We have a huge install base of people who have used our products and therefore they've used our Ethernet IP cores. The amount of people who've used 1 gig Ethernet on Altera devices is large. Let's leave it at that. But what we're doing is we're actually adding in two and a half gig ethernet into our one gig ethernet core. Okay. So this is now a new option. It's form, fit, function compatible with the one gig ethernet. So all of the firmware, all of the drivers, all of the software that you've developed based on the behavior of our one gig ethernet now translates over easily to two and a half gig ethernet. That's super cool. And we also give you the ability to have your own Mac. So we'll pull out the Fi separately and give you the Mac separately. So again, with the FPGAs, getting that flexibility and the configurability to do whatever you want to do in whatever configuration you've done it before, we completely support that. The piece of this here that we really find interesting and what we're where we've spent our money to innovate has actually been in the dynamic reconfiguration aspect of this IP core. With our transceivers and with our FPGAs, you're able to dynamically reconfigure data rates. So we can change from a 10 gig to a 12 and a half gig without having to power down your device. This is something that we've done for generations. Very cool. Now, when you take the one gig ethernet and the two and a half gig ethernet and the particular problem in this space with the existing cabling and the cost of that, this becomes very, very interesting. I'll get into the details of exactly what we've done with that dynamic reconfiguration in a bit, but we've also already gone ahead and done interoperability testing. Nice. With MG-based T5 devices. Ahead of it actually being publicly available, we've implemented this in a number of customers already. So it may be the first time we're publicly talking about it, but this is not our first time with two and a half gig. And then we always offer our IP cores with a Cordis Prime Standard Edition license for free. Good, okay. Anybody can go in and design in this IP core and run it in hardware for as long as they need to to make sure that it's going to be compatible with all of their infrastructure without even having to go through the effort of purchasing and buying a license for it. Excellent. I'm interested in the dynamic reconfiguration you mentioned. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure. So at a high level, what's going on here is that you have a number of switches, basically these one-u pizza boxes, they call them, with a slew of RG45 ports. And you want to be able to reuse all of that existing cabling. Right. So what we've done in here is there's a dynamic reconfiguration of our transceivers that is built into our devices. We've pulled that in to not only configure and reconfigure our transceivers, but also reconfigure all of the soft logic that we do in our IP core. So the Phi will update and the Mac will update. 
And essentially, what we can go to is you can take a system that runs today at one gig, update your POF file for your Altera FPGA, and with nothing else, no other effort, switch your system whenever you're ready from one gig to two and a half gig, from two and a half gig to five gig, and from five gig even to 10 gig if we get there. Excellent. So the amount of scalability that this gives you with essentially one redesign of an FPGA is amazing. Hmm, that sounds like a bit of black magic. What have you actually done in your IP to accomplish that? <laughs> so we start off with our Phi that's hardened in our FPGAs. Okay. We've gotten our hardened PCS and we have our hardened Mac. Outside of that, we've actually been able to put a couple of muxes into our PMA side, which handles the line rate changing on the actual cabling. Okay. The next is the actual reconfiguration block. And this is a kind of a standard transceiver reconfiguration that we've been able to implement in our devices for multiple generations. So this is tried and tested. And then the last piece of this is that we've actually essentially updated all of our clocking so that we can mux in different clocks. So as you're getting data and as you're doing your link training, let's say you pull this card out, reconfigure your device, put it back in, and let's say your transmitting side on the other end decides you're gonna update all of that infrastructure from one gig to two and a half gig. Now you're basically getting data coming in at two and a half times the speed that you were expecting before. With this transceiver reconfiguration block and this muxing of the PLLs and this new architecture we have in our IP core, we will sense the rate of the data coming in. We will reset all of our clocking. We will reset our transceivers and we will use the new two and a half gig clock to clock the rest of our IP core. All right. That was quite a bit to take in. Can you go over the main points again for me, please? It is a lot to take in. Essentially, what we're doing is allowing enterprise users to get all of the benefits of an increased wired network bandwidth with a huge amount of cost savings, being able to basically balance the amount of wireless traffic that they're now seeing and, and going to continue to see in the next near future. We have an IP core today that we've used with a number of customers. We've tested it in hardware on our own side. We've tested it with industry leaders on the Phi device side, we know it works. And what's available today, again, as I said, with Cordis Prime 15.1 in the standard edition. And lastly, the most important piece to this is that we give you a very easy, very clean path to get from one gig all the way up the chain into 10 gigabit ethernet within the same IP core. Excellent, I'm ready to get started. What should we do next? It's a really easy solution. You open it up, you open up the ethernet, Mega Wizard. There's a hardware example design already built, already targeting hardware, specific board that we sell. Five clicks probably, and you're ready to go. You've got it in hardware and you can really test it out and put it through the ringer. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for joining me today, Javaria. Thanks, Amelia. It was a pleasure to be here. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more about Altera's 2.5 gig Ethernet IP and how you can get access to the IP core in Cordis Prime 15.1. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to YouTube, keyword eejournal, or check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com.